Hey guys, Jim here. Holy shit! For those of you that went to the Blade Show 2015, that's pretty much what all of us have been saying ever since we got back. Holy shit, what an amazing show that was. And as much fun as I had and as many people as I want to shout out and say thank you to and as many knives as I want to show, I had to prioritize here and it really wasn't easy. But the reason why I'm choosing to show this acquisition first is because this is pretty much the knife that I had in my head that I had to score when I went to the show. For those that don't recognize the packaging, this is a Tony Murphy owned custom. And this particular custom is... Dun, dun, dun. That's right, that is the Sigil. Now that is going to be the collaboration between Tony and Derek Monroe. Now, you guys haven't seen a Monroe on my channel, but I did get a chance to borrow uh, Sigil Mark III from my good buddy Bill Gallagher, and I played with it for about a week, um, did some photography on it, didn't really have time to sit down and do a proper video. And I can tell you right now, it, when you look at the styling of the knife, it is truly one of the most exceptional modern designs in today's flipper market. Now, you guys know I'm a big fan of Marfione. I picked up my Annex last year at the Blade Show. Still own it, still love it, from the uh, initial run of 100 pieces that were made for the Blade Show. And, of course, my classic. Oh, yeah, my good old DOC with the Cassidian Blade. Still love this knife, still carry it all the time, still honestly flabbergasted that, uh, that I actually own that knife. Now, you may recognize this packaging from last year's video when I talked to you about the Annex, because this is where that packaging was born, was in that knife last year. But what you're going to see inside... Da, 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 I, I really need music. I need thematic music to use on the shows. If you've never seen the packaging, it's really, truly exceptional. I made a video about two years ago about the importance of giving somebody, giving the consumer really good packaging when you're buying a high-end custom. I'm not saying you should spend $20 for your packaging if you're selling a, you know, a $100 knife. But when I'm spending $1,000 plus, I like to have packaging that makes me feel like it's a complete, uh, complete thoughtful process. And, and Tony has really amplified his game. So here's the interior. The box is a magnetic lid. Here's the interior with the uh, dagger logo. You'll see the dagger on the pouch. And there'll be another little dagger right here, which you can take off of here and use on the lanyard if you choose to put a lanyard on your knife. Very cool little additional thing. There are guys out there that would charge you $50 to $100 for a little lanyard token like that, so that's pretty cool. Um, this, obviously, in titanium, does come off, and you can use this as a patch on whatever Velcro goodies you have in your arsenal. And then inside, another thing that I, I love, the, the uniqueness that Tony displays here. <clears throat> Let's get the box out of the way. For the COA, instead of just having a nice printed COA, which would be totally fine, he's actually machining this. I'm, I'm assuming this is a piece of aluminum, machining it out of metal. So here we have the uh, Marfione dagger. Here we have Derek Monroe's logo. And here we see all the information that we need to know. The model is the Sigil. Uh, blade is done in the apocalyptic finish in Elmax steel. The handle is also done in the apocalyptic finish. And the over travel. A uh, plate that's on the lock bar is done in stainless steel Damascus. Date of birth, 05-2015. They are not serial numbered. Remember, these are full customs, and I don't know if there are any plans for a production model anytime soon. And then the both makers are signing it, both Derek Monroe as well as Anthony Marfione. Let's get that out of the way and get into the knife. So you open it up, it's a really nice case, nice soft lining inside. As if that weren't soft enough, he even gives you uh, a microfiber bag, kind of like an Oakley sunglasses bag. So we get to the knife inside, and oh dear God, oh. Now you see why I was so excited about getting this? And I, I really feel super ridiculously fortunate and before I get too far into the knife I want to give a really special thank you and shout out to Hank Greenberg 
who made this a possibility. Um, they really weren't going to be selling any at the show. They were for display, and uh, he was just really super awesome about it. Tony just kind of threw up his hands and went, hey, I'm not in charge of selling the stuff. you got to talk to Hank. And I already went there to talk to Hank earlier anyway, and um, stood in line, and I waited and waited, and it was, it was a couple hours of waiting before they could get everything unpacked. This was... You know, the opening of the show, I was in there about 9 a.m. The show opened at noon, and they had a lot of work to do, and they kind of got going a little bit late there. And they busted ass to get all their dealers' stuff pulled and boxed up and ready for them, and then to start pulling out their own product to put out. They really busted their ass. Their whole crew was uh, really, really hustling out there. So, uh, Hank... One of the cool things about Hank is, uh, even if it's the first time he met you, he treats you like a really special person. It uh, doesn't matter if you've ever spent money with them or not, you're important to him. And it's really nice to see that in an organization as large as Microtech, you really have to think about how big that company is. And the personalized attention that Hank tries to give you. I mean, he's being pulled in a million different directions between working and every other person in that show knows him and wants to give him a hug and say hi and slap him on the ass and rub his bald head and all that kind of good stuff. And he still tries to make the time that he spends with you make you feel special and important. And that's really awesome. And we need to see more of that. So anyway, Hank, thank you from the bottom of my heart. This made my blade show right here. So let's get into the knife. Uh, first off, it is a smaller knife than you think it is. When we see people taking pictures and they're holding it and they're putting their camera real close to it, the force perspective really makes the knife seem larger than it is. You have a three and a half inch blade and the overall, believe it or not, is under eight inches. It's seven and seven eighths of an inch. It is a very, very, very compact knife. He is really bringing the tip of the blade all the way out. Uh, to the edge of the frame. So it's a very compact, very slim, and very lightweight knife. Now they do these in carbon fiber and they also do them in full titanium. This obviously is the full titanium. Um, the cutting edge on this is about three and three eighths of an inch. So you've got plenty of room there and you still have a little finger choil. So that's kind of nice. The flipping action. Oh, it's like butter. Oh, very hard detent too, by the way, which you know I love. Oh, like butter. Mm. So basically, the overall design is of Derek Monroe's uh, incredible imagination. And what Tony did is he reimagined a couple of things. Obviously, he's using his hardware in here, all the triangular-shaped hardware. We know the tri-wing hardware very well. There's only one downside to it. There is no way to adjust the pivot. And I'm assuming there's you can use one of the large tri-wing tools here if you need to. So please do keep that in mind. If you're going to buy one of these, it's a flipper. You're going to flip it like crazy. You're going to loosen your pivot like any other flipper over a certain amount of time. So you're probably going to want to invest in that tri-wing tool. Just make sure, call somebody, make sure it actually fits this because they don't know. I've not experimented with it. You see the aggressive design in the milling that uh, is obviously Derek's design. His wonderfully unique backspacer, which is marked signifying the collaboration. And my camera is having a very hard time focusing today, and I apologize. There we go. So it's uh, marked with both Derek and Tony's names right there. Now this is something unique. This is not on versions Mark 1, 2, or 3 from Derek Monroe. This is a perfectly flush pocket clip. So when you're holding the knife, you, there are no hot spots. You don't feel anything. So how do you get it in the pocket? Do you, no, you, know, you don't pry it up like that. Squeeze. Hello, I'm your pocket clip. What up? All right, so yeah, you just simply squeeze the back. Open it up and drop it right into your pocket. It is now a more conscious effort to put the knife into your pocket, so do keep that in mind. It's not like you're just going to simply just drop it straight in, but it is a really, really nice feature to have. And you got to realize, this is not a massively thick piece of titanium, and they were able to recess that whole mechanism, the pivoting area, the spring, because it is spring-loaded, or spring-tensioned, I should say, not spring-loaded, um, and all that in this very slim little area. And then you do have the sub-frame lock that we see Tony using in so many knives, going back here to the DOC. This is an all-carbon fiber knife, so uh, in order to get the titanium lock bar, he uses the sub-frame lock. So we're seeing the same thing right here. 
here is that beautiful Damascus plate just gorgeous as you see I'm still experimenting with my lighting setup so I see a hot spot here that unfortunately I can't do anything about right now it's a little bit too late but uh, please bear with me I just wanted to get uh, a chance to show this off steel lock bar insert something else that Tony has been doing for quite a long time number of years now uh, and it's served him very very well uh, very late lockup not really cause for concern uh, but yeah I'd say that's about ooh seventy percent lockup roughly but super solid not gonna go anywhere you got the jimping on the front of the flipper tab notice how far forward the flipper tab is as well you know you usually see a flipper tab somewhere around here and they put it really far forward and that allows you to get a rip roar and rocket action out of this thing now obviously it's on bearings it, mine is not broken in yet uh, today is what what else today Wednesday Wednesday following the blade show I just got my knives back yesterday I had a, a friend of mine Kevin thank you very much drove all my knives back since he was driving back to Texas and I was flying and I don't trust TSA and I'm not really all that trustful of the United States Postal Service either so so let's talk about the apocalyptic finish so what you've got is a matte bead blasted finish so it's very very dark and then you have obviously it's been tumbled it's got like the scratched up pattern in it where it looks like well it's been through the apocalypse this means you have a guilt free user here's a knife that from blade to frame carries a finish that will mask your everyday wear and tear marks it's genius it's brilliant now what I would have loved to have had and that was my goal was to buy a couple of Marfion uh, customs I wanted more mirror polish goodness very few guys can achieve the mirror polish that Tony does as perfectly as he does and I was hoping to get a Sigil that had the mirror polishing that's not even what they had the other is this is a very brand new model it's, it's a very new model it debuted at the Miami show just about two months ago and uh, it's, from what I heard uh, Derek and Tony were basically grinding right up until the night before that show to bring out their pre-production prototypes. Uh, sold all those out instantly, of course. A couple guys have flipped theirs already. A couple dealers have gotten their hands on them, and they've gone far in excess of $2,500. If you're entertaining the thought of trying to get an actual Monroe, eh, good luck on that. Obviously, he's another maker that, you know, his books are not open. And I'm seeing them go anywhere between $2,200 and $3,500. They are getting very pricey. This one, the way this one is set up with the apocalyptic finish and the Damascus lock bar over travel plate is $1,500. That is the direct price. I've already seen them pop up on dealers' sites for $2,000. I would expect these to probably top out somewhere between $2,300 and $2,500. Now, if they become super crazy scarce, yes, the secondary market's going to take it up much higher. But right now, that's right about where they're sitting. Is it worth $1,500 to me? Oh, you bet your sweet, rosy red ass it is. I love this knife. If you want something that is small, that is compact, that is lightweight, and has a really aggressive, modern or futuristic look to it, incredible action, this is the way to go. I mean, this is, it's almost in a league of its own. Yes, it's small, but still fits great in my hand. I wear a size large glove, so I don't have a huge hand, but I don't have a tiny hand. And I don't feel that the flipper tab is forcing my hand down the frame like some makers or some uh, knives do. You've got that little bit of choil to choke up on and you've got plenty of room down here for your thumb. Uh, the jipping back here is not particularly sharp. It doesn't really need to be. I think it serves its purpose uh, just fine. No other jipping really. There's a, there's a little bit of jipping right back there on the protruding backspacer. And that protruding backspacer, by the way, uh, kind of gives it a biomechanical look, doesn't it? Um, it does give you an option for a lanyard if you choose to use it. Now, I'm thinking about screwing around and trying it, maybe putting the little dagger that's hanging off the pouch on there and see how I like it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. All I know is I really, really, really love this knife. Um, I haven't really tried flicking it. Yeah, it flicks okay. I mean, it's a flipper. You're really going to flip it more times than anything else 
but if you want to manually open it you certainly can with that very large thumb slot opening that's on there overall it's sleek it's aggressive it's unique and it's somewhat more attainable somewhat more affordable than trying to get your hands on the custom that the uh, the original customs made by Derek Monroe I think that this one compares favorably to that the only real difference that I notice is and again they're customs so they can probably vary from one to the other fairly easily but the one that Bill allowed me to borrow for a week um, it would gravity close very easily and this one not so much again it's not broken in yet uh, but it really it's a very small very thin very lightweight blade so I was surprised when the original closed as quickly and smoothly as it did I'm not saying that it needs to but that's the only real difference that I can detect <clears throat> excuse me great blade shape great finish work wonderful unique design uber limited status anybody that gets one of these should feel very very privileged uh, that they got the chance because I know I certainly do this is one of those knives that just blows my mind and listen I think by now you you know that you can always trust what I say especially when it comes to Marfion products um, I have not been especially kind in some of my reviews of Tony's products and really that was on a production DOC really didn't have anything to do with the customs I've never really had a problem with any of his customs they're fantastic obviously if I've had this for I've had this for a year and a half I've had this one for a little over a year now I'm obviously keeping them for a reason because they're super fucking fantastic uh, I have been trying to get my hands on the black DLC with the mirror polished bevels on the annex to have a secondary annex because I love this one that much um, this has proven to be a really great everyday carry piece for some reason I can't get it to flick I, I normally just flick it right open um, this one has seen a lot of pocket time this has had you know been a lot of fun this one's great for carrying in shorts uh, it's it's slim it's super comfortable it's lightweight and you know now I live in Texas it was bad enough when I lived in Florida but now that I live in Texas and we see those you know 103 105 degree days there's going to be a lot of days I don't want a lot of weight in my pants. I've already got a lot of weight in my pants. That's all carried in the front, though, so it's okay. But I don't want a lot of weight in my pants, a lot of weight in my shorts when I'm carrying my knife, I should say. So this is a really great candidate for that. And it's funny, I really don't pick up smaller knives anymore. And this is the smallest that I usually go is three and a half. But I did pick up two during the show that were smaller um, just because I, I couldn't resist them. I could not say no. And I started realizing, hey... It's going to get fucking hot here. I need something I can carry, not just my big blocky tanks and, and monster knives. And there's a certain time and place for all that. But, oh, look at this. Just soak that in for a minute. I still get as excited about new acquisitions as I did years ago. The fascination for me hasn't really worn off. I love that extra little channel that's put in there so that your finger can follow through properly. There's so many great little details that allow me to get excited and justify that excitement. Beautiful Damascus plate. There are variations with full Damascus blades. I've seen mirror polish blades, apocalyptic finish, carbon fiber frames, all titanium frames. Uh, there was a brass frame variation. Uh, my good buddy uh, Fazel Yamin uh, on his YouTube channel, you can see that there. He got one of those. I don't know if they're going to be making more. I think that may have just been one of the prototypes. I'm not sure. But all the little tricks and features and gadgets and cool little guy shit that's built into this, for me, makes it worth the money. I spent a shitload more money on knives, more than double on some other knives. So, I don't mind spending the money as long as I can justify it. I don't buy a knife just because it's expensive. It's got to live up. The reputation and the quality and fit and finish have to live up to the money that you're spending. Realize these were $750. Most people paid $1,100 to $1,500 because of the secondary market. I love this knife for the money that I spent. 
This was 1150 direct from Tony. Uh, he made three at the time this was made. I've seen one or two more since then. These generally hit dealers for about 2000 in my opinion, worth every penny. Tony is an artist. He makes incredible shit. He's got a hell of an imagination, a great mind, and almost everything will have some sort of tactical utility in its design. It's not just a flashy showpiece. So if you're looking for something cool, something you can use, and something that all the guys are going to get into and you can show off and go, hey, check out mine, they're all going to be impressed. Take a look at the family of Marfione Customs and even the production Microtex. I've had plenty of production Microtex. Always loved them. I'll catch you guys on the next video. I'm going to be pumping out a few more of these thanks to the acquisitions at Blade 2015. For those of you that I met for the very first time, thank you so much for coming up and introducing yourselves to me. It was a blast. And for those of, the, of, of those, those of you that... For some reason, I can't speak now. For those of you that I've met in the past, we got to see each other again. It was a great pleasure. Um, Blade is so amazing. Even if there were no knives to buy, if everything was lottery <coughs> and I didn't win anything, it's worth going just to meet the awesome caliber of people that attend that show. And I'll see you guys on the next video.